most people are not going to know how to solve this simple math word problem. Matter of fact, a lot of you are going to be pretty confident that you have the right answer only to discover that it is wrong. All right, so let's see if you can figure out this question and here is the problem. Ed can dig a hole in 50 minutes. Sam can do the job in 40 minutes. How long will it take if they work together? All right, now feel free to use a calculator, but if you think you know the answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'm actually going to show you the answer in just one second. Then of course, I'm gonna fully explain how to solve this problem. But before we get started, let me tell you who I am. My name is John, and I have been teaching math for decades. And if you need assistance in math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so one more time, here is the question. Ed can dig a hole in 50 minutes. Sam can do the same job in 40 minutes. How long will it take if they work together? So the correct answer is 22.2 minutes. All right, now, if you got this right, I definitely have to give you a nice little happy face, an A plus, and a 100%. Matter of fact, if you were in my math class, I would just say, take the rest of the year off. I have no idea how you got so good at math. You're probably watching that guy on YouTube. But if you got 45 minutes as your answer, well, congratulations as well, because this is probably the number one wrong answer. So let's see why 45 minutes is not the correct answer. So what a lot of people do is they think that, well, Ed can do this job in 50 minutes and Sam can do this job in 40 minutes. So if they work together, maybe we need to average these times, right? So maybe we need to find the average of 50 and 40, which of course would be 45. Now, at first glance, that might make sense, but if we just kind of think about the problem for a second, this certainly doesn't make any sense at all. Because if Sam can do the job entirely by himself in 40 minutes and then ask Ed for help, you would think that the job that Sam can do by himself in 40 minutes with Ed helping out would take less than 40 minutes, right? So the right answer has to be less than 40 minutes. So 45 minutes is certainly not a good answer. But uh, you'll be surprised on how many times people would put this down as an answer to a question like this. So if you put this down, no big deal, but let's see how to solve this problem. Now, there are different approaches to figuring out the right answer, but I'm gonna show you an approach that you would learn like in an algebra course. So this type of problem in algebra would be described as an algebra work word problem. It's a work problem. So I'm gonna show you a formula that you can use to solve any uh, sort of work problem or work word problem in algebra. And here is the formula, and let's talk about what it means and how to use it. So the way this formula works is the following. So let's say there is some job that is getting done, some work that needs to be accomplished, and let's suppose we have two people. Now let's say person one can do this job, in this time and person two can do the same job in this time. So we're gonna call uh, the time person one can do that time P1 and we'll call P2 the time the other person can do the same job. Now the time it will take if they work together is going to be right here. So one over their combined time or the time it will take if they work together is gonna be equal to one over that first person's time plus one over that second person's time. So you can see how we can use this formula to solve this problem. Now, of course, there'll be some algebra involved and we'll get to that in one second, but let me further explain these uh, work problems in algebra. So here we are talking about people to do a job, but these can be machines as well. So we can have like machine A can do this job in this uh, amount of time and machine B can do the same job in this amount of time. And we can have more than just two people or more than just two machines. So this formula can, uh, can continue on in the same format. So one over 
the time it will take together, the combined time of all people or all machines working together will be equal to 1 over P1 plus 1 over P2. Now, if we had a third person, it would be plus 1 over P3, etc. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this formula to work to solve this problem. So to apply this formula, we need to go ahead and pull the information from the problem so we can plug it into the formula. All right, so Ed can do this uh, job in 50 minutes, i.e. dig a hole. So maybe we'll call this P1, the time it takes person one to do this job. Now Sam can do the same job in 40 minutes, so we'll call this person's two time. So we'll assign P1 as 50 minutes and P2 as 40 minutes. Now the question is, how long will it take if they work together? Now, this is an unknown value, so we'll use the variable x to represent that unknown. So what we have here is Ed's time is equal to 50 minutes. Again, that would be P1. Sam's time is equal to 40 minutes. That would be P2. And we'll let x equal the time it takes them, uh, the time it will take if they work together. All right, so all we have to do now is plug this information into our formula. So here is the formula. 1 over the time it takes them working together is equal to 1 over P1 plus 1 over P2. So all we're going to do is simply plug in our information. So this is going to be 1 over X is going to be equal to 1 over 50 plus 1 over 40. Now just uh, kind of keep in mind that our units of measure here are in minutes. So when we solve for X, X will be in minutes as well. All right, so what we have here is 1 over x is equal to 1 over 50 plus 1 over 40. And I'm going to go ahead and actually write this equation this way. So we have 1 over 50 plus 1 over 40 is equal to 1 over x. It's the same thing. I'm just moving uh, this to this side of the equation and this to the other side. All right, so what we have here is a lovely rational equation. And to solve for x really comes down to your ability to solve these types of equations in algebra. All right, so once again, we have 1 over 50 plus 1 over 40 is equal to 1 over x. Let's see the steps to solve for x. Now, there's a few different approaches we can take to solve this equation, but I think the best first step here is to clear these fractions. So we have 1 over 50 plus 1 over 40 is equal to 1 over x. Now you can see here we have 50 and 40 down here in the denominator, and then we have x here as a denominator as well. But if we multiply this entire equation by the lowest common denominator, and all we're going to do is use these numbers right here to get the LCD, that would be 200. What we're going to do is clear the fractions here, and this is going to make the algebra much easier. So that is going to be our first step. Now, of course, you have to know how to find the lowest common denominator. So between 50 or given 50 and 40, the LCD is 200. So we're going to multiply the entire equation by 200 as our first step. So if you want to kind of pause the video and see if you can do this algebra on your own, it will look like this. You're going to basically put grouping symbols around the entire equation and multiply 200 by each term in the equation. All right, so let's go ahead and see that work right now. So 200 times 1 over 50, well, 50 goes into 204 plus, now remember, we have to distribute or multiply 200 by everything in this equation. So 200 times 1 over 50 is 4. 200 times 1 over 40 is 5. So just in case you're confused, what we're doing is taking 200 or 200 over 1 and multiplying by each term in the equation. So 200 over 1 times 1 over 40 is what? Well, remember how you multiply fractions. You multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So here you have 200 over 40 or 20 divided by 4, which of course is 5. All right, so we have 4 plus 5 is equal to 200 times 1 over x, and that is going to be 200 over x. So continuing on, we can add 4 and 5. Of course, that will be 9. So now we're down to 9 is equal to 200 over x. So what we have here is really a lovely proportion. So the easiest way to solve this uh, equation at this point 
is to put 9 over 1. Now, a proportion is two equal fractions. So 9 over 1 is equal to 200 over x. But a property of proportions is the following. Let's take a look at a simple example. So if I have 1 half, and let's think of another fraction that is equal to 1 half, maybe like 3 over 6. So this is a, this is a proportion. It's one fraction that is equal to another fraction. But the great thing about proportions is that their cross products are equal. In other words, 2 times 3 is 6, and that is equal to 1 times 6, which of course is 6. So we can apply this same strategy here to solve for x. Again, we have one fraction that is equal to another fraction. Okay, so what we're going to do is simply use the cross product, i.e. cross multiply, to solve for x. So we're going to have 9 times x is 9x is going to be equal to 1 times 200 or 200. Okay, so one last step here to solve for x, and that is to divide both sides of the equation by 9. So 200 divided by 9 is approximately 22.2 minutes. And this problem or this answer makes sense, right? Because we know the fastest time that uh, Sam can do this job by himself is 40 minutes. So if Ed is helping him out, well, it should cut the time kind of in half. And you can see here that this answer is kind of like half of the time it takes Sam alone doing the job. Okay, so hopefully you found this uh, problem interesting and the solution informative. Now, if you are taking any sort of algebra course, you definitely need to know how to do a lot of different variety of algebra word problems. So again, this uh, type of problem is classified as a work problem. But in algebra, you encounter all different types of kind of common problems, things like motion problems, distance problems, mixture problems, etc., etc. Now, if you need help in algebra or algebra word problems, I have a ton of these type of videos on my YouTube channel. But my best help will always be in my math courses. So you may want to check out like my Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.